All right, everyone. So let's actually go back before I proceed with this uh, to the previous segment. So basically, I obtain the boundary work to be this formula, right? So the question is, how am I gonna, uh, you know, like analyze this? I don't want to just leave it like that. And in typical in, in nature and in application space, we have three general processes, okay? They are not limited to this. There can be a process that doesn't fit to any of those three, but this is the most common ones. The first type is called the isothermal, and you kind of know this, I mean, T is constant, right? T, if the temperature is constant through my process, this is P, pressure is constant, and that is the easiest. And I'll talk about polytropic. Actually, the polytropic, you may see that it is a very special case. Actually, polytropic is the most general case, okay? If it is, uh, you know, it's fairly application-wise uh, common, okay? But I'll come back to the uh, polytropic, so let's start with the constant temperature and go proceed one by one, okay? That is my goal for this particular segment. So if is an isothermal expansion or compression, obviously, here is what will happen. So let's look at the ideal gas law. We talked about this before. P, V, V is the uh, specific volume, right? So this also is volume by mass, right? So I can write this P, V, M, R, T, and this R is not the universal gas constant as we talked about in the previous segments, okay? Um, so let's look at this, let's, let's, let's investigate this a little bit. So in an isothermal expansion process, and it's a closed system. So this mass is not changing, right? It's a, because it's a closed mass. This R is a constant for a particular gas that is given. It's not the universal gas constant, but it's still a constant, okay? T, saying that the T is constant. So the right-hand side seems to be a constant, okay? So the PV, you know, I can also sell this to be as equal to a C. C is a constant, okay? Yeah, so then, then uh, looking at my equation for boundary work, you can you remember volume one to volume two. I have P times T volume. So as my uh, variable is volume, why don't I go ahead and express P in terms of the volume and see what happens? Okay, all right, doesn't sound too bad. Volume one to volume two, P will be MRT. You can also call it a C constant divided by the volume, D volume, right? As I mentioned, MRT is constant. I can take constants out of an integral. You can think of this like integral of 2x is equal to 2 times x, right? 2 times dx. And we want V2, d volume by volume. So now, okay, what is this d volume by volume? I kind of think you remember it, but maybe not very clearly, but that's going to do just fine. Let's call it the natural logarithm of the variable that I have here. So a ln of uh, volume, and this is going to be related from volume 1 to volume 2. So this becomes n, r, t, ln volume 2, just like this, right, minus ln of volume 1. Okay, do you remember this? You know, when I, I subtract 2 ln, you know, let me write it in here, ln a by b is equal to ln a minus ln b, right? So I'm going to use that. You don't have to actually, you know, this will just, just work fine, but it's gonna look nicer if I write simply like this, ln v2 by v1, okay? So here is what is happening as well, just to connect with the previous segment. So if I have my ln number more than one, which I'm expanding, I get a positive value and I get a negative value. That's what I was talking about in the previous segment. I think with mathematics, it may make more sense now, okay? If you wanna box this up, this is an important equation, but don't just pick and use it. You have to analyze whether the ex isothermal expansion is, is valid for that particular uh, process that you're going through, okay? So that was one option, not the option. Let's go to the second option that I want to analyze. And the second option is going to be actually pretty nice. Isobaric, or the pressure is constant, okay? Isobaric process, okay? So let's write the P constant. Maybe you don't remember fully, so. So actually, the, the mathematics becomes even simpler in this particular case because uh, what did I say about constants and integrals, right? I can take constants out of the integral. I'm saying that P is a constant. Okay, then take it out. It doesn't belong inside the integral. We want to be to d volume, right? So what is the qu question is, what is the integral of d volume? It is volume, okay? But sometimes uh, as students, we don't see it. So I want to give you an uh, idea. Like when I ask this question, what is the integral of dx? Everybody says x, right? So that's what we know. Okay, so what I'm doing over here is, if I have a dx and dy, right, double integral obviously, so I can separate them to, you know, integral of dx times integral of dy, right, 
and the first integral will be x, right, integral of dx, integral of dy will be y, so you can see what happens over here, this is the area, right, and sometimes in mathematics we show this as a dA as well, right, so the integral of dA becomes a, okay, from, I'm not going to go over too much, but this is dx, dy, dz, I'm using Cartesian, if you choose you can use polar coordinates too, but this will end up with the x, y, z when I take the integral, and this will be the volume, and this is the volume. So you can see over here that I got myself a very nice formula, p times volume, and this needs to be v2 to v1, again, p, v2 minus v1, and I'm still consistent with my methodology, or sign rather, I will get a positive sign if my v2 is larger than v1, I will get a negative sign if my v2 is smaller than v1, which is called the compression, right, compression, and that will be the work done on the system by the surroundings, okay? So the polytropic is another, another one that we encounter actually fairly often, polytropic, okay? So it is actually a generalized uh, equation that we use, and the polytropic process basically says that p v to the power of n is constant. Okay? So this this general this generalization will be p v to the power of n is constant, and n is constant. Okay, the, the value n is also constant. Okay, this is not a variable. This n n is a constant. Um, it is a very general equation, and I can change a bunch of different n values to mathematically simulate or analyze a wide range of real, not ideal, but real gases where how they compress, how they expand. Obviously, if you remember from the isothermal process, if n is equal to 1, I get mRT, remember, PV is equal to mRT. So I'm talking about more like real constants. Okay, cool, that's nice. So in this particular process then, hmm, 2S process, right? So you would agree with me if I write this, right? P2, V2, N is equal to constant. Because not that I'm going from uh, P1 to P2 in my analysis, right, in this pro polytropic process. Okay, then let's, let's, let's do it. And the, the, the formula will still be the same, that the one that we started with. So it's going to be volume 1 to volume 2, P, D, volume. So then, looking over here, look here. So this, because I will do the exact same thing that I did for the uh, isothermal process. I'm trying to uh, replace P with volume because this variable is volume, so I want to get something with volume over here. I don't want pressure. So, okay, so I can, can I write this from this equation? V to the power of N is equal to constant divided by pressure. Oh, yeah, I should be able to, right? So let's write it V1 by V2. So I get myself C, which is a constant. So I'm going to call this C, just I don't want to write constant. It's a long word. D volume. And again, constants can come out of the integral, right? So I get myself v1 to v2, the volume by volume to the power of n, right? And I also actually, you know, it's easier for me to take the integral of this one, right? v1 to v2, that is the preferred version. It's the same thing, I'm simply moving, you know, the exponent as a negative when I go to the numerator from denominator, right? Okay, so what is the integral of that? You may not remember it, but well, I am going to pretend you do, right? So it's going to be C, V, minus 1 plus 1. So when I take an integral, I always increase the order, right? If this was x squared, it's going to be x cubed. Do you remember that? So this was, well, x squared dx, right? It will be x cubed. If I have x to the power of 10 dx, then it's going to be x to the power of 11, right? So I'm adding 1 plus 1 to here, right? Did you realize? So that's exactly what I did. But then, let's give that example, x to the power of 10. Uh, when I take the integral of that, I'm going to get x to the power of 11 divided by 11, right? So same logic over here. It's going to be minus m plus 1, like this. Then, I, obviously, I have to relate this from volume 1 to volume 2. Okay, then I need to relate this integral. c times volume 2 minus n to 1 minus c times volume 1 minus n to the 1, like this divided their common denominator over here, well, why don't I write 1 minus n, right? That looks better to me. 1 minus n. Okay, so now the only kind of like uh, tactic that I will use in here is I'm not going to use the same c for this one and this one, because look at over here. 
So this is equal to C, right? So the first one, as I'm written in terms of the V2, right? I'm not going to write V1 over here because I cannot cancel anything. But if I write this one, right, as constant, maybe I will. And I will do the same kind of approach for V1 over here. So you will see what I get now, okay? So it's going to be the C will be P2, V2 to the power of N, that is the constant, times V2 to the power of minus N plus 1, right? Minus. Now I'm going to write it with respect to P1 because that now you will see why I'm doing this in a minute. You don't have to do it, but this will make my life much more easier for analysis purpose, okay? 1 minus N, okay? So let's look at this. P2, I can't do much about. P2 is going to stay exactly what it said. What is the multiplication of these two? I have a V2 to the power of N and I have V2 to the power of minus N, right? So mathematically speaking, this I can write, you know, uh, V2 to the power of minus N times volume, right? 2 to the power of 1, right? So what I'm saying is, and I am multiplying this, basically this one, with that one. So that will give me 1, right? So that, will, that is going to be V to the power of N divided by V to the power of N, which is 1, okay? So then I, all I'm left with is V2 minus. I will do the same thing for this one, but this time I'm going to get, well, P1 doesn't change, but this time I'm going to get V1, right? So that's what I have. So this will be 1 minus N, okay? Okay, I think that's going to do it for me from this angle. I will now solve a couple of questions to illustrate how these things come together, okay? Have a good day, everybody.